Hello and welcome to Imaginations from the Futures. My name is Zhao Ke and I work in the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China in Chengdu, China. And I, I am also work as co-chair of the UMAC Futures, which is an organization of young scholars from university museums around the world. I'm so glad today to start this project named the Imaginations from the Futures. We plan to make online talks with the young scholars from different university museums, different countries, and different districts to listen to the voice from the future, to follow the imaginations from the future. This project is like kind of the description and observation of the current image by the young scholars and also the imaginations from them to re-image and reconstruct the university museums after the pandemic. I believe it will bring more energy, hope, and vitality. So it is Chengdu time, 2 p.m., and it's 3 p.m. Tokyo time, where our guest speaker is. Let's welcome Ayumi Tarada. Ayumi is an uh, affiliate, a social associate professor at the Intermediate the Q Department of the University Museum, the University of Tokyo. She specializes in museum studies and cultural policy. And uh, we met in UMAC AAMG joint conference in 2018 by Ami. So could you please say hello to the audience and give us a brief introduction of yourself and uh, your institutions, Ayumi? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, Taoki. And hello, everyone. I am Ayumi Terada of the University Museum, the University of Tokyo, Japan. My research fields are museum studies and cultural policy, and I'm interested in exploring something new ways of using museum collections to enhance the significance of museums in contemporary society. So let me briefly introduce our university museum. We call our university museum for UMUT in short. UMUT was established in 1996 as the first university museum dedicated to research and education in Japan. The facilities are open to the public as well as researchers and university students. Our collections cover various research fields at the University of Tokyo, for example, biology, our science, uh, cultural histories, and, and so on. The University of Tokyo was established in 1877. Historical heritage of our university is a part of UMUT's collections. Today, uh, about 4 million scientific specimens are kept in UMUT. UMUT currently runs four museums, including outposts. I'm working at the one of them, Intermediatek. Intermediatek was opened in 2013 in front of Tokyo Station outside the campus. The University of Tokyo and Japan Post jointly operate Intermediatek in the historical building of the former Tokyo Central Post Office. I will mainly talk about some activities in Intermediatek of UMUT today. Uh, yes. So, Tauki, please. Okay, thank you, Ayumi. And uh, uh, so we are very glad that we have you here today to share your work experience, your research, and your ideas about university mm -hmm. museums from the perspective of young scholars. So I have four questions for you, and maybe you can yeah. Yeah. Uh, introduce something of your institution uh, in the question, in the answers. So the yeah, first yes. question, yes, the first question, mm -hmm. because I checked the information of your um, university museum, you have four museums and you have 400 minor species mm -hmm. objects mm -hmm. in your collection. Mm -hmm. That is a huge collection, you know? So yeah. I, I'm so impressed and uh, I think it's amazing uh, so my first question is, 
Now, what is the specific project or program you are working on and why? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, the question. So now I'm working on editing a book on botanical illustrations of orchids. Um, I call it a book instead of an exhibition catalog because uh, this editing work started after the end of the exhibition. Uh, we held a special exhibition entitled Orchids Blossom, Botanical Art Collections from the University of Tokyo in Intermediatech from June to September of this year. Uh, I was in charge of this special exhibition. Uh, you know, the university has produced botanical art to support and further its research on flora. The images of plants painted accurately has a scientific value, of course, and we can also find artistic value on them. This exhibition aimed to offer visitors a superb opportunity to appreciate both aesthetically and scientifically the values, various form, forms of orchids. Uh, so, okay, why did we plan this exhibition? There were two reasons. The first is that we are currently conducting research on a newly discovered collection of botanical illustrations from the early days of our university in the late 19th century. If we finish all the research and then give back the results to the public, it will take much longer. I wanted to organize the kind of exhibition that would keep people informed about our ongoing activities. So we decided to focus on all kits as part of the results of that research. Secondly, the impact of COVID-19 has made us think more about the significance of focusing on our collections, which is the core of the activities in university museums, you know. Uh, collaborative projects with outside institutions can be very fruitful, but when that becomes difficult, we realized that our own connection, connection was exactly what we could use as a resource for our activities. This idea was also evident in other museums, I think, wasn't it? So why did we start editing the book after the exhibition finished? The main reason was the exhibition schedule had to be moved up due to COVID-19, but that's not all. The orchid blossom exhibition not only featured botanical illustrations of orchids, but also specimens, books, and various cultural objects related to orchids in order to open up the natural and cultural history of orchids. We thought it would be a good idea to produce a book to fully explain the natural and cultural history of orchids based on our collections. As you know, commentaries of exhibition objects have to be very short in order to be read in galleries. This time, due to COVID-19, unfortunately, there were many people who could not come to see the exhibition. Because the book had started to edit after the exhibition, we will be able to include the photos of the exhibition views in this book. Uh, this book will be able to convey the exhibition space design to more many people. Yes, this is my ongoing work. The book will be published by next May. Next May, right? Yep, next May. Wow. That's that is a very great work, I think, uh, because the COVID-19 has, has influenced, uh, have, has affected the world for two years, right? We, yeah. at the beginning of the pandemic, we, our work and our research might be stopped by the uh, COVID-19, but we have to try um, many ways or methods to solve this kind of problem and we have to keep on research of, uh, and, and impress them to the audience to the public that's a very great work yes and, and uh, if you 
uh, if if in uh, in the next May, if you published the the uh, book, you can send me a link, and we can check the, you know, the your research. Yes, online. Uh, yes. I, I, I would like to do so. Yes, I would like to 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 uh, watch the book. Okay, read the book. Okay, thank you, Ayumi. <laughs> and the second question is, if you are creating an exhibition, what object do you want to do, want to connect or display most related to the past two years experience? One object. Uh, yes. One. One object. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's very difficult to answer, uh, but yes, uh, uh, I think uh, before I answer the exhibition, uh, I think there are two characteristics of university museum collections that I find interesting. One is the diversity of genres. The other is that the history of the university and each research field can be seen through scientific specimens. So therefore, uh, so th this is only in my in mind, yes. but the theme of the exhibition that I would like to plan in the future mm -hmm. is uh, history of studies in University of Tokyo, uh, scientific illustrations tale. Uh, as I told you before, in the past exhibition of Orchid Blossom, we featured illustrations related to botany. Mm -hmm. In this future project, I would like to focus on various academic fields other than botany, where the act of drawing is closely connected to research activities in the university. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, archaeological illustrations of artifacts will be an example, I think. So why I'm interested in such kind of theme? Uh, so uh, the object I want to correct or display most is the scientific illustrations. Uh, why? Uh, in order to illustrate something, you need to observe and you need to understand the object you are drawing. I believe that the various scientific illustrations that have survived today can tell us the histories of their disciplines. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, for, for example, portraits of past professors as related materials of uh, this exhibition project may also tell us side stories of their disciplines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, exhibition planning that excites me for me is that it can bring together everything from natural history to cultural history. University museums and collections will allow me for such kind of free style, uh, free thinking style. Mm -hmm. I think one day, <laughs> what do you think? So, yes, yeah, so this is my um, ideal future project of the exhibition. Yes, yes, thank you Ayumi, mm -hmm. that is a good answer. And I, uh, I remember that um, a Japanese uh, scientist got the Nobel, Pri uh, Nobel Prize uh, last month or this month? Last month, yes. Mm -hmm. a, Jap a Japanese scientist. And, and mm -hmm. I think, I, I know in the past 20 years, there are 21 sci uh, Japanese scientists got the medal, got the Nobel Medal. And uh, some of them are from mm -hmm. your university, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, some of them. Yeah. Yes, some of them. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, as you you mentioned just now, I think that is a very that is a very interesting uh, and very interest mm. uh, very interesting topic to show their stories uh, mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. audience and the public. Because that and they represented a period of the history, mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. stories, their name, mm -hmm. their lamp, their books. Yes, something like that. And I think, yes, you are right. That is a, a key point. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe mm -hmm. for the, uh, from a perspective of the uh, University mm -hmm. Museum. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we don't have Nobel Prize, so we, can, we cannot do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, something like that. 
yes, from the, <laughs> the, the, the story of the scientists. Yes, and uh, uh, the third question is when the COVID-19 is complete, completely gone, and we believe that, yes, uh, it will, it will disappear. So what do you want to do most uh, related to the university museums? So for university museums, uh, the most important, uh, one of the most uh, important activity is to, uh, is the education for students. So mm -hmm. I would like to give the place back to students okay. who want yes. our university museum. So I am in charge of educational support for students okay. who volunteer at Intermediatec mm -hmm. uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, we have not been able to gather at the museum mm -hmm. to do uh, the activities which we had been doing before since last spring until now. Mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, the students have continued their volunteer activities online and we have developed an online museum guide program for children. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so we found uh, something to do uh, such uh, difficult situations. Uh, and we learned a lot through the online activities. However, online students cannot see the real objects or experience the actual things that happen in the museum space. And these are very important, uh, important factors for students who want to volunteer the museums, I think. So I would like to get that back in full force for them when the COVID-19 is completely gone. And at that time, uh, we will be able to provide more complete educational support through a combination of online and on-site activities. I hope it. <laughs> okay, okay, get it, uh, Yumi, yes. Um, now the COVID-19 stopped the children. Uh, mm -hmm from uh, stop them outside the campus and outside mm -hmm. the museum and and uh, yes yes that that is a, a significant and important a point for us to give the best mm -hmm. back to them yes mm -hmm. you are right and uh, uh, and in my opinion um in this period um it gives us it gave us another chance to explore the online teaching and online education activities, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, I think um, with <clears throat> the uh, globalization, with uh, globalization, online teaching and online activities will be the certain part mm -hmm. of teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. In, in our museum, we tried some something and we explored some ways for the public and our uh, students. Uh, we opened the campus very early in last year. We opened the campus mm -hmm. for the for our students and they came back to the university and they can organize something through the internet for the public. And we have we have got some good results. Uh, from the activities, yes, and we tried so, uh, and, and uh, that is also our dream to uh, implement this this kind of work. Yes, uh, okay. And the fourth question is uh, the first question is like a question of bottle, you know, the bottle uh, flew in the sea, <laughs> and so the, the this question is from the last guest speaker. Um, okay. The next guest speaker, Slen Yala, she's from the great, the great Serbia Chemists Connections, University of Belgrade, Serbia. Yes, she, uh, her name is Slen Yala and uh, she asked something. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you the question. So, how to encourage volunteers or employees or students who didn't visit your museum before take part in your programs. Uh, she means, she meant how to attract, attract them to your museum before they know very, very well of, of your museum. I, and I think it's, it's just in your uh, working field. 
right? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes. I think this is a very important question for university museums and the collections. Thank you, Sai Jana. So, uh, in the online exhibition guide program we designed with our volunteer students, uh, we use photographs. Uh, the program uh, I told people. So, the, in this online program, the students choose an exhibit that caught their attention and use the photo to talk about uh, why it caught their attention and what is interesting about it. So this is a great way to get children mm -hmm. interested in museums. Mm -hmm. uh, we could also use a video. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we learn a lot uh, under the uh, COVID-19 uh, so, um, social situation. Uh, so videos, photos and online access would be useful for students who have never been to our university museum before uh, because such digital tools will be easier to use uh, for them than to visit, uh, visit the museum in actual. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think, uh, I think I learned that digital tools have more potential for students who are not familiar with museums. In our educational programs for children, university student volunteers act as good guides intermediate to stimulate children's curiosities. Even for students who have never been to our mu university museum before, I think it would be a good stimulus to hear other students of the same age talk about how to enjoy the museum. So I haven't had an opportunity to convey this yet, <laughs> but uh, I would like to plan an educational program in which university students talk to their friends about how to enjoy museums in the future. Yes, no, thank you so much for asking me uh, the question that gave me a new inspiration. Okay. Thank you, Sejana. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> good to hear that. Okay, and uh, uh, yes. Um, so, as you said, the the attraction we have to for the attraction we have to uh, find something or figure out something that is easy to spread, right? Easy to spread and direct, like the video, uh, the photo. There is um, uh, image to attract them that is easy to spread. The second one is, is beyond the space because museum is not a, just a space, it's, it's, it's an institution. Mm -hmm. So we can mm -hmm. we work here in the institution to produce some, some direct attraction to sp spread out, okay, from what you said. Okay, so Ayumi, uh, our, uh, question in your bottle will keep on. So what is your question to the next speaker? Maybe the next speaker <laughs> is from France. We are, we are uh, mm -hmm, yeah. now we are communicate with her. And what is your question to the next speaker? <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, providing me such uh, opportunity. So my question is, uh, what is a good design for museums? Please tell us your idea based on your experiences in university museums. I'd like to ask this question to the next speaker. Uh, I am interested in considering how we can design the behavior of museum visitors through various uh, exhibitions or performing arts event mm. uh, or um, audio art project. Uh, I told uh, Taoku this audio app project in Miami, UMAC. Mm -hmm. So it would be important for university museums to develop this kind of fundamental discussion on museums, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the visual design, but the design in the broadest sense of the term. Okay. So we could think about uh, museum functions through a keyword of design. So 
I look forward to hearing an, any answer from the next speaker. Wow, that's good. That is a very good question, worthy to worth us to thinking about for a long time. It's a, it's very general, and uh, we have to answer it from different uh, version of the university museum. So I think it's a, it's a big question for the next next speaker. <laughs> yes, 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 and uh, we have to. Uh, because we are working, because we, we are working in the university museum, we have to think from this way, from the way of your question. Yes. Okay. So it's uh, it's the end of the interview. It was really a fruitful conversation with Ayumi, and thank you for your time, Ayumi. Uh, thank you so course. much. Okay. Of course, and uh, thanks to our audience. And I really hope them enjoy it and uh, join us next time. Um, and last, I would like to say, you make futures. We are coming. That's all from me today. See you next time.